Hello everyone. Uh, this is going to be my last video of 2018 because I'm getting ready for uh, my New Year's. Everybody's coming over to my house. And uh, I just wanted to wish all of you a Happy New Year and at the same time explain how I make my cutlets. I made seitan from scratch. I find that is the most tender uh, seitan to make. And it's not as... Um, it's not as rubbery as if you're going to use the vital wheat gluten. But I do want to show you how I use, um, how I make my egg wash. And basically I'm using ground flax or you could use ground chia. A little bit of miso. Some water. Now if you find that it's getting thick because we also have a little bit of flour and we have the breadcrumbs. But because we also go into the flour, it's going to start getting thick on you. So if you find it's getting thick, all you have to do is add a little water once in a while. Just taste it to make sure that it still has that saltiness. Because that's basically what you want. And you want to be able to dip it in something wet and then something dry. So, um, which would be the breadcrumbs. We're going to go into the, into the flour first. So I'm just going to mix this up. And don't mind the noise. I've got my daughter helping me clean up for our guests. Not that our house is super dirty, no, but you do want to have it nice and clean when everybody comes over. So there you go. I am using a little bit of miso, a little bit of, I'm using flax, ground flax, and that's going to be my egg wash. But what I also do to this is uh, I use like a Greek seasoning. This is uh, from um, Clubhouse. Uh, signature uh, brand and it's basically a little bit of Greek seasoning and why do I use Greek seasoning I'll tell you why um, because of the oregano and because it has a little bit of lemon when we make cutlets we like to squeeze lemon on ours it's been an Italian tradition and because this Greek seasoning has the oregano and it has nice spices in there uh, the salt the pepper it also has a little bit of those lemon rinds in it, which gives it that nice tanginess that we love when we eat our cutlets. We serve our cutlets with a wedge of lemon. So there you go. Taste it. It should be perfect because the miso is a little salty. The Greek seasoning adds to it and it's going to be perfect to dip our cutlet in. There we go. Now we're going to start off with. Oh, yeah, sorry, forgot. We're going to also add some to our breadcrumbs because uh, we can't just buy breadcrumbs at the store because a lot of the breadcrumbs has cheese in it. So what I do is I add a nice capful of Greek seasoning to my plain, plain breadcrumbs. And if you can't find it, you could also make your own just by drying up some bread and then grating it. So I'm just going to mix this with my hands. And you just want a little bit of that Greek seasoning, not a lot. And if you want, you could also add maybe some thyme or oregano, whatever you like. I've got some Italian herbs, which is basil and oregano. And that's all you need to make your fancy breadcrumbs. So I've got some Greek seasoning in here and a little bit of dry herbs and that's all you really need. So I'm gonna take my cutlet and I'm going, you can't see it because I don't have the space. Can I have a glove, Erica? Maybe I don't need one. Okay, so into my flour or starch, it's gonna go right into my, my egg wash. And then it's going to go straight into my crumbs. And press it down, guys. Now, this is why I love using... Look how big it got. This is why I love using um, my cut... Uh, the, uh, the seitan that I make from scratch. Because it is a more tender one, you get a little cutlet and it ends up becoming a beautiful big cutlet. I'm just going to give it one more. There you go. 
and this is done. So this is going to go onto a plate, okay? And basically all you want is some wax paper, and you're going to be able to place your cutlet right on top. There you go. And we're going to make the rest. There we go, into the flour. I'm going to put a few of them in there. And if you have little pieces like this, it's okay too. Here we go, into our wash. Remember, if your wash is getting too, if it's getting too thick, all you have to do is simply uh, add a little bit of water and you're good to go. It will start getting thick because of the flour or starch we're using. There we go. Cover it. Press it down. Don't over press it, especially if it's the uh, the one that we make from scratch. It's a little more tender. I did make this meat yesterday. I did reheat it. Okay, if you're making the meat the day before, I say you should reheat it before you slice your uh, before you slice your meat, because otherwise it's going to be too hard for you to to work with or to cut. So your best bet is to uh, heat it up again so the meat gets nice and tender, nice and soft. Here we go, press it down gently. Don't overpress. They do get bigger on you as you press them down. And they're going to be ready for frying tomorrow. So isn't this easy? And it costs you so little compared to having to buy any kind of prepared meats at the store. And you know what's in it yourself. I know exactly how I season my meat. Now, if you want to make, it's an old video, but it's a video. If you want to know how I make these cutlets, there's a video on how I make my meat from scratch. So you just gently press it down, and you see your cutlet gets bigger and bigger. There you go. Beautiful cutlet. I'll show you what it looks like when I start small. That in it goes. We're going to press it. You're going to see it's going to get a lot bigger. And I also made my traditional stuffed olives. There's my cutlet. See how big it got? And that's it. Uh, I also made stuffed, uh, sorry, stuffed olives. I'm not sure if I ever showed you how I make it from scratch. That's something I should maybe show you guys really delicious uh, those are made they're not fried yet they're just made and ready for me to uh, fry up which I will fry tomorrow but uh, yeah very simple simple foods it does take a little extra time so you do want to prepare ahead of time I usually make it a couple of days before my party this way all I have to do is fry them up. There we go. Into the crumbs. Press, press, press. And a little cutlet. Look at that. You would never know that this isn't meat. And the taste is amazing, so I don't even have to tell you that. I've had my cousin come over, and when he tried my cutlets, he thought, even my aunt, rest her soul, she's not with us anymore. That woman became vegan at 92 years old. What a trooper. She was something amazing. But, yeah. She, first time she tasted my cutlets, she thought for sure that she was eating, believe it or not, veal cutlets. She says, this is not possible. How is this not meat? And I would tell her, it's not meat, Sia. 
and she just couldn't understand. She goes, but how do you do it? And I would explain to her how I would wash the starch out of the flour. And now today we're lucky. We've got vital weed gluten. I couldn't find vital weed gluten, not even if lightning would strike me. There was no way I was able to find it for some reason. Nowhere around where I live. So I had to learn how to make seitan from scratch. And there was, I know a lot of you are messaging me saying, you know what, uh, Connie, I can't seem to, uh, to get it. It's too rubbery. It's too this. It's too that. What, what, what am I doing wrong? Well, let me tell you something. Seitan is something that you have to master. Number one, you have to learn how to like the texture of how you're cooking it or how you're kneading it. Because what you do to your meat is what you're going to get in return. If you put something in it, you're going to have a certain flavor. Uh, use another ingredient, it will change the texture of your, of your uh, seitan. So it's really what you do to it that will give you the perfect seitan that you like. Now as you can see how small that piece is, and once I press it down, it will change its shape. Because I'm making it from scratch, it's a little more tender. Now what I do is, for this recipe, what I did is, first I washed my flour. Look how big it got. You see that, guys? So first I washed my flour, and then I, um, when I put that washed gluten in my food processor and to that I add um, I added some mushroom powder uh, a little bit of nutmeg because uh, nutmeg is a flavor that we use Italian use a lot of during the holidays so uh, my mom used to use it in her meat when she used to cook it so the meat would pick up the taste of the nutmeg and because I put nutmeg inside my gluten and in the water it also picked up the taste of nutmeg and let me tell you nutmeg is what you're going to taste not meat i'm just going to add some more miso to this a little extra now you say well how much did you use well it doesn't matter how much i used what's important is that you're going to get an egg wash. If it's too th if it's too watery, just add a little extra uh, ground flax or ground chia, whatever you're using. And if it's uh, too thick, just add extra water, and you won't have a problem. I will add extra miso for the saltiness. And this is the one I'm using. I'm using uh, organic miso. It's a sweet miso, but it's also very salty miso. Here we go. Fork and just a dollop that size, and it really adds a nice flavor to my egg wash. I don't have to go out and buy a replacer, I don't even know what that stuff is. It's basically starch, I think. Starch flowers. This, at least, you know that you're getting um, delicious tasting miso along with uh, some benefits of omegas with our flax so i rather use this than use any egg replacer that's at the store and if you really want your cutlass to have that eggy taste you could even put a little bit of that indian salt the uh the pink salt it tastes just like egg it's got a lot of sulfur in it there you go see how it's getting thick add a little extra water and we're ready to do more cutlets so what are you guys going to be doing for New Year's? Are you going to visit? Are people coming to visit you? For the Eve, it's going to be just me, my husband, and Erica. And come uh, New Year's Day, everybody's coming to my house. And I have made an abundance of food. I've made sauce for pastas. I'm making stuffed olives. We've got the... Uh, the cutlets. I've got all kinds of roasted vegetables I'm going to be making. Um, 
pulling out some of those mushrooms that I picked over the summer and fall. I'm going to be grilling some of those. I'm going to make a lot of grilled veggies. There's going to be all kinds of great stuff. I made my beautiful sliders, which are amazing. Had one yesterday to try to die for. So, so good. So I made about a hundred sliders. Yep, a hundred sliders. So we're gonna have sliders. We're gonna make, I made chicken meat where I'm gonna be making, it's gonna be all finger food, guys. It's not gonna be a sit down because there's too many of us. But it's gonna be buffet style. It's gonna be on the tables, kitchen table, dining room table. And people are going to just take what they want, find a place to sit down, and enjoy their meal. Oh, maybe a little extra. Let me just get that one more time. Kind of missed that one. There we go. And look, this. you see my sweater? Look at my sweater. Never fails, eh? I always tend to be wearing black when I'm... When I'm using flour. So, right, leave me a comment. Tell me what you guys are going to be doing for New Year's, what you're cooking up. I have so many things in my head. Maybe I still have time. I might make some rice balls. We'll see. If I still have time, I will. And then I'm going to look forward to the day after where I'm going to do nothing. And then we're going to wait for my sister Gabby to do her magic for Easter. So that's going to be my rest time. My sister, my youngest sister, Andy, she did Christmas at her house. We all went there. New Year's at my house. There we go. This is so great. Look at that. Yes, my hands are in the flour, guys. My hands are washed. Today, by the way, I made homemade. Here, I'm going to show you. So I've made tzatziki. Uh, if anybody's interested, because, you know, when we have uh, some veggies out, you could dip in tzatziki. I made tzatziki. Um, I'm going to be making my maple, cashew maple and mustard. I made homemade relish i wish you guys can taste this this is my hands are washed my god this is gonna go on the sliders if you want i'm gonna make a video and this is all raw by the way guys there's nothing cooked in here um this is gonna be incredible there we go homemade re uh, relish look at that so if you want, I'm going to make a video and show you how easy it is to make that. But what a game changer. Very easy to make. You add something extra when you're making dinner. I'm using them to put, I'm using that to put on my sliders. But come this summer, you want to make a barbecue and have some friends over. And they get to taste your homemade, um, homemade relish. They're going to say, wow, you really went out of your way to make something nice. So I'm going to show you how to make this. Maybe right after the New Year's. Because this is going to be done. And I love having, putting relish either on burgers or even if I'm making a raw portobello burger for myself. I still love using uh, relish. So I'm going to show you how I make my homemade relish. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful cutlet. I'm going to need some more bread. Just clear that off. And my daughter, I got to thank my daughter Erica because if it wasn't for her, I'd be like. I'd be dying because there's no way I can do all of this and tidy up the house for when people come over. Just too much to do. Okay. 
So yeah, if it wasn't for her, I'd really be behind, behind, behind. So thank you, Erica, for always being there for me and giving Mama a hand. Okay, my ground flax. Where did I put it? Did I put it away? Oh, no, right here. <coughs> she really is a helper. There we go. I might have to make another batch of meat. See? A little piece of meat like this. By the time you're done with it. It's going to be a lot bigger. Look at that. You see it? So how was your Christmas? Did you guys have a nice Christmas? And what are you excited about the new year? What is it? Is there something that you want to change? I know I want to be able to do more things with nature. I really want to take the time to breathe rather than, uh, you know, spending our days in the house. I mean, it's great to be able to... I want to travel. I want to be able to... Travel, and when I say travel, I don't mean, you know, God knows where I'm going. But just do more things with my daughter, maybe hiking and camping. Ooh, did I just do that? I want to go camping with her. She's so excited. She wants to go camping. She asked me if I wanted to go with her, and how can I say no to her? She's like my best friend, my daughter. I mean, both of them are, but one is busy with her own family. She's got her hands full, let me tell you. So, me and Erica are connected to the hips sometimes, which is a good thing. Beautiful. You don't want to overpress, guys, because you don't want to break them. So, what do you want to do for the New Year's? Is there something you want to change? You know, you want to concentrate more on your health. That's another thing I want to work on is staying healthier. You know, I work out, but I want to really concentrate on my workouts. I don't just want to work out and forget. You know, I want to be able to stay healthy. I mean, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. So everything I do is going to be a plus for me. I do work out when we go, you know, hiking and stuff, but I really want to, I want to push it up a little. I used to always body build, not that I was a massive person, no, but it was a nice, lean, toned body. Now it's just an old body. <laughs> Before it was nice, toned body, and now it's just an old body. Well, we can't be here forever, right? Not we're not ready to go anywhere, but I do want to stay as healthy as I can. Not sure if I have enough cutlets. Might have to make a batch. Oh no, these are gonna be fine because I forgot I'm even gonna make my tofu. Tofu with a sweet sauce. So yeah, this is gonna be more than enough. Forgot about those. Hands are clean, guys. I have lollipop fingers. Press, press. I'm just going to add some water to this. that easy no measurements guys there's no need to measure you just know when you have it and this meat is guys cholesterol free there's no fat in this meat 
Seitan, for people who can't eat it. There's some people who are intolerant to seitan, uh, to uh, vital wheat gluten or to gluten. So I'm going to say don't eat it. But for people who can eat it, if you're if you're not if you're okay with eating pasta and bread, then you're okay with eating this. Uh, but this is like this has been around for thousands and thousands of years. This meat has been around in Asia for the longest, longest time. So it's not something new. A lot of people think that oh, what is that meat that you're making? You know. But this stuff has been around for a long, long time, guys. Am I praising Satan? I'm going to say, if you can eat it, by all means, enjoy it. And I'm going to say, if you cannot eat it, then I'm going to say, stick with stuff like uh, breaded tofu. You can have that. There's a lot of other things you can have if you can eat vital wheat gluten. Maybe I'll cut those cutlets and make them smaller. What do you say? This way I can stretch it up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my tofu in beautiful triangles and then I'm going to bread them. I'm probably going to do just starch because I like the crispiness it gets. And then I'm going to make a nice chili. Mm, that's what I got to make. I'm going to have to make a nice chili sauce. Orange and chili, that's going to go great with my tofu. So yeah, I think I'm good with the cutlets too. I don't think I'm going to make any more cutlets today. Yeah. Okay guys, I want to show you something. Here we go. This is my leftover broth that I have, uh, that I cooked my uh, seitan in. And I had some, um, I left the bay leaf in there. I had uh, some garlic with the skin on. I removed the skin, squished up the garlic, and I added, uh, and I removed the, uh, the cooked onions. That's all that was inside here. There was a little bit of nutmeg, but that was it. It was a little bit of olive oil, very little, and the rest was just water, garlic, and onion. So what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to add some lentil. There we go, a little bit of lentil, and we're going to make a very small lentil soup for lunchtime. There we go, a little bit of lentil. I have a sweet potato I'm going to break apart and add to the, uh, to the soup, but I'll do this at the very end. I have a little bit of sweet potato, but for now I'm just going to cook this. I'm going to add a little extra water, and we're going to make a little soup with some leftover uh, water that I cooked my seitan in. So this is another way that you don't have to throw away uh, food or especially if you're cooking some seitan with the, uh, the, the flavors of the meat and the, uh, the herbs and spices that you put into your broth. It's going to make such a lovely broth to make either a soup or even a gravy. And in this case, I'm going to make a little lentil soup. I'm going to cube up some mushrooms, a little bit of sweet potato, and that's going to be lunch for someone. So I'm just going to cook it as it is. And if I need extra water, I will add it. If I have to adjust salt or whatever else you want to change to your soup, you could do that later on. But for now, you just want to cook up that lentil and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so here we are. We're going to put a little bit of mushrooms. And it just, you know, shows you that sometimes you don't even need to uh, go out and buy um, veggie stock. If you're making uh, seitan or if you're making... Um, okay, I shouldn't have cut it that way, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to cut it in half again. I also put the butt ends, guys, so you can either uh, squish it like this or you can cube it up. It's really up to you. Uh, might as well do them all the same, right? 
But yeah, if you could taste this broth, this broth is just simply, simply delicious. And for me to take that and throw it, uh, throw it in the garbage is so sinful because you could just simply make something delicious with it. Now again, I'm making a fast lentil soup, but if, um, and all I'm using is a little bit of mushrooms and uh, the lentil, and I'm going to put some of that sweet potato in there. But just to tell you, there we go, just break up those fibers and throw it into the soup. Um, if you aren't making something with it right away, just put it in a jar, put it in your fridge. You can make a gravy, you can make a delicious tin gravy with that. And there is our soup with that broth that I made my seitan in. And it's that easy to make something delicious and very simple. All I'm going to do is see if I need to add extra water. If I need to extra, add uh, extra water, I will. The flavors of the broth is delicious as it is. And uh, that's it. Maybe a drizzle of olive oil at the very end. If you want, you could even add a little bit of pasta. Maybe break up some spaghetti and break them up into little bits. And you could put some of that in there. But the more simple your soup is, the more delicious it is. And this is very high in protein and very good for you. So don't throw away that water. Do something with it. So that's it, guys. I'm not going to keep you here all day. I want to be able to edit this video and put it up because I want to wish you all... A happy new year I want you to be healthy I want you to have an abundance of goodness in your life that's what I want for all of you I want health first and then I want you to have an abundance of uh, everything good that could come your way that's what I wish for all of you so I'm gonna say thank you again thank you for always dropping by to see what I'm up to and for the ones who don't mind listening to me yap 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 I want to say thank you again and happy new year's guys stay safe don't drink and drive let somebody else take the keys if you are and guess what I'm gonna see you in my next video for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.